I am very encouraged and excited that we're going back to the Supreme Court of the United States for a case that impacts the life issue, impacts evangelism, has tremendously broad impact. In December of uh, 1990, my brother and I and several others volunteered to stand on a sidewalk outside of a post office behind which was an abortion clinic controlled by a federal judge's order and distribute New Testaments and tracts. That day, uh, we encountered perhaps a couple, three persons who were going in and out of the building in order to go to the clinic. And we were eventually charged with five counts of violating the federal order, which prohibited certain activities, uh, which included uh, blockading or harassing. But in this case, uh, there were no blockades. The purpose was first and foremost to reach that woman's soul. And then, of course, attempt to persuade her that her child was equally entitled to the right to life. And uh, that eventuated in what is now the Supreme Court case, Schenck versus Pro-Choice. Interestingly, the judge in that case, though, did something that no other federal court judge had done at the time, and that was impose floating bubble zones. Any person seeking access to the abortion clinic facility uh, had a floating zone that went with them. No matter how far away they went, as long as they were coming to or leaving the abortion facility, they had this speech-free zone that traveled with them. The floating bubble zone, 15 feet around every person in 17 counties, involving about a population of two million people. We're gonna basically allow a culture to develop where, in fact, we see those that don't wanna hear a message have a veto right, an audience veto. That can be very, very dangerous. The implications of this go way beyond the life issue. You can't have intimate communication, one-on-one -on -one communication, on a public street in Buffalo, New York, with a 15-foot stay-away zone. How do you give someone a piece of literature? So we, made, we turned an abortion protest case into a literature distribution case. You read the opinion and it's very clear that it became a free speech literature distribution protest sign case rather than an abortion blockade case. And that was the only way we were gonna win that case. Just because the issue is abortion doesn't mean the First Amendment changes. That the abortion distortion factor that is so prevalent in the court's jurisprudence is wrong and has to be rejected.